Your next challenge is entitled Hurdle Jump. You are to create a function that takes an array of hurdle heights and a jumper's jump height and determine whether or not the hurdler can clear all the hurdles. A hurdler can clear a hurdle if their jump height is greater than or equal to the hurdle height. So that's important that we are allowing it to be equal. So let's show this in examples. Notice this collection, one, two, three, four, five. The highest in here is five, it looks like. And the hurdler's jump height is five. So it can clearly, he or she can clearly get over any of these heights. So we return true. This is not the case in the second example where the hurdler's height is only three. Notice we have a couple five, three fives, a four, and a three. So this would be the only hurdle that this hurdler could clear. Since there are one or more that he or she cannot, we're going to return false. And you're, you're free to look at the remaining examples if it's still not clear. They give us one important note here, that we should return true for the edge case of an empty array of hurdles. Zero hurdles means that any jump height can clear them. And that sort of makes sense, right? There's nothing to jump over. There's no hurdles present. There's no jump height required. So we should implement that as well. We'll go over to the coding section. You should pause the video and solve this. And I'll go into my solution. I'm going to do it differently probably from now on where I'm going to go for the shorter solution first. And that way the people who are good with it can sort of move on if they want. And if you're not comfortable with something or just want to hear more information, you can stick around in the video and we'll do um, the ones where we sort of do more of it on our own. And so, yeah, that'll probably be the new format going forward. Anyway, let's start with that um, note that they gave us to check this edge case of an empty array. Yeah. And this gives us a chance to talk about something that we should very much. Um, what happens, we've just been assuming that this array, that these arrays that get passed in are initialized and contain values or possibly no values, but at least have been initialized. That's not always the case. And there's an important keyword called null. Maybe you've heard of it. It sort of represents nothing. And we need to check first that the array even, that there's something to it, that it was even initialized. So we should do that. Or, because you can declare arrays without initializing them. You can just say, hey, I have in array of ints, you know, int array, my ints, right? This is saying, hey, my, my ints is going to hold an array of integers, but at this time we haven't, we haven't initialized it, we haven't done anything, it doesn't become um, really an int array until we initialize. We might say new int 3, one, two, three. You know, for example, you could put whatever you wanted in there. But now it's actually um, an integer array. It's been initialized. So that's sort of the difference there. You can run into these nulls, and you very much will. So it's good to be aware of. And then it highlights another important concept, which is um, this idea that we've been using length to get array sizes. And it's very important that we checked first for null to make sure that this is initialized because you can't access this length property on null on nothing, right? There's nothing there. You need an array reference first. Once you have an array, then it makes sense to call length on it. It doesn't make sense to call length on something that doesn't have that property. So really we should be checking for null first, assuming it's there, this hurdles array is valid and we can access its array properties. So in this case, we wanna make sure, well, otherwise if it is zero, I mean, it contains no hurdle heights, we are going to trivially return true as they directed us and I think that makes a lot of sense. So that's good, we got that out of the way. So at this point, we know hurdles has been initialized. It contains one or more values. We can return 
the array. And if you remember, we accessed a property in, an, in previous videos, or I should say a method we used to iterate over the collection and see if any of the elements matched a certain criteria. And we're going to do that again. You should recognize this any that we used before. And so um, we're going to use a lambda function here. And remember, you get to name this. I'm going to be very explicit with this just to make it clear till people really get it. Um, in practice, you'd probably see someone just use the letter H, you know, for their variable name. But we'll be very explicit with this. We're going to call this hurdle height because any one of these in the collection is a single hurdle height. So that's our integer parameter, input parameter. Then we have this arrow, and then we have the body of our anonymous method. So we can say um, hurdle height greater than jump height, right? That's a problem if this, if this condition exists. This is saying, no, the hurdler can't make it over. There's one we found there exists a height in this set such that the hurdler cannot jump over it. So that's a problem. So this essentially does what we want to do, right? But this is going to say if any hurdle that is too high exists. And we wanted the inverse logic, didn't we? They wanted us to determine whether or not the hurdler can clear all the hurdles, right? So all we essentially have to do is invert the logic here. And you can do that with negation, the exclamation mark. And you can kind of read this like there are not any um, cases where the hurdle height is higher than the jump height. If that makes it a little more clear and easy to read, there are not any. So, And that's the actual logic we want that, that they asked us to implement. So um, we didn't make any right that was brought in system uh, link brought in. OK. And I think we might be good here. Um, yeah, if there are not any hurdle heights over the jump height, then you're going to get it true. If there are, you're, you're going to get false. And so yeah, that looks good. Um, at this point, if you're good with this solution, if this is what you came up with, feel free to continue in the series. Um, if you want to stick around for further comments, you're very much encouraged to do so. I'm hoping you're becoming more comfortable with these lambda statements. Remember, there's no, nothing magic here. It's just a really condensed form of a function. So, I mean, well, let's clear this first. So. I probably should have copied that. Anyway, wouldn't hurt, right? Remember, if hurdles is null or length equals zero, the return true. Okay, so then we had return hurdles any. So I'll, I'll use a condensed form here that you might be more likely to see. But anyway, there's nothing magic here, right? It's kind of intimidating at first, but it's just it's just a function. You know functions. Public static can't clear. Um, oh, don't forget your return type. A lot of boolean in there. Can't clear int. You know, it's just like this. And then you put your logic in here to make it work. If you really want to see me do that um, to match this signature, let's let's go to the any method. And this is sort of what I used, this predicate here, right? And so you got this funk thing 
don't think we've talked about that, but that's sort of our predicate. Remember, predicate's the fancy term for something that returns a Boolean. You can go here, and you'll notice they got all these different kinds, right? Basically, the last item is the return type, and then you can have one or more parameters up to a reasonable limit. I think they go way beyond what's reasonable. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're already up to 16 here. But yeah, that what, that's what that is. You can read more about this here. But we essentially have to match um, what they were looking for. In our case, our source is this generic collection. We had integers for our collection. So it's going to be an int. So I got an int parameter and returns bool. So hopefully you can see that connection. Um, to show it actually working, let's do this. Private static int. I'm going to create a private class variable. Private will go over this when we do more with classes, but it's just a scope thing where people outside of this program class can't refer to it. And we'll talk about why that's useful later. Jump height, and I'm just going to bring it in just to store it. And then I can access it in here. So can't clear would say her return hurdle height uh, greater than jump height. And then I think in here we can use can't clear. And let's see what they do. Int does not contain definition for any. Yeah, when we refreshed, we lost our using didn't we? using system link. Let's try that. That's where any we get our any from. And now we're all false. What did I do in the bad in the logic? If hurdle height. Oh yeah, remember we had to invert the logic. If not any. If there are not any hurdles that the hurdler can't clear. So, yeah, that would have been useful to copy that before I deleted, but here we are. Driver, internal error, okay, might be some network thing. Let's just give it a refresh, give it a second. Okay, so we're good. And yeah, if you've seen that last error, hopefully that um, reassures you sometimes the server itself messes up and you didn't do anything wrong. So don't be frustrated if that happens to you. Give it a little pause and try again. So yeah, this is probably more readable and you can understand what's going on. But once you do a bunch of these, this is going to seem like a real chore when you have to write one of these out every time. And you're going to go back. You're going to be like, oh, this is ridiculous don't want to deal with that anymore and you're just going to put your your lambda in there you know you'd be very happy to do that if you don't need this junk so yeah hopefully the lambdas are getting more clear they're very cool um, we also mentioned that we could just do this with your Good old fashioned looping, right? Should we go back to our for each? We had four. We've done for each. Why not? Int hurdle height in hurdles. Ah. Let's refresh this. If I hit the button now, it'll submit. As soon as it refreshes, I'll go back into the coding section. We'll paste that in where we left off. Okay, for each hurdle height and hurdles, if hurdle height is greater than the jump height, simply return false. If you get through the collection and that never happened, that condition was never met, 
you know the hurdler can clear all of them, so just return true. And let's check it out. Cool. Yeah, so that, that's your bread and butter right there. You know, you've been doing a lot of looping. Um, so that's perfectly fine if you knock this one out that way too. Um, yeah, I think that covers everything. If you have questions, feel free to ask. Uh, again, thanks for watching.